episode is brought to you by A3, a CMMC cloud-based collaborative environment for an organization seeking certification, otherwise known as an OSC, to build CMMC packages and share with a marketplace of consultant RPOs and assessor C3PAOs. Hey everybody, and welcome back to another episode of 123 CMMC. My name is Dana Mantilla, and I will be your host today. And our guest today is Ryan Cloutier, right? Close, Close enough, okay. And we have uh, a good topic to talk about, but before we get into that, Ryan, why don't you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about you? Uh, thanks for having me here today. Um, so I am the president of Security Studio. Uh, and what Security Studio does is we create a SaaS-based risk assessment platform to help organizations navigate things such as risk assessments for the CMMC. Uh, myself personally, I've been doing this for a very long time, built my first PC when I was eight, wrote my first software program when I was nine, compromised my first system at nine and a half. All the gray hair, uh, half of it's from working in cybersecurity, the other half is from raising a teenager. Uh, <laughs> and I really, my specialty is I, I have a passion for connecting with the everyday person on this topic and, and really speaking human, taking kind of the tech out of it, which fits the mission of Security Studio, which is to simplify information security for everyone. Um, so that's what I spend my days doing, a lot of volunteer initiatives. I have a very strong passion for K-12 and underserved communities. That's fantastic. And the fact that you like to talk to people on a level that they can understand is definitely what we need more of in the cybersecurity world. So I love hearing that. So today we are gonna talk about risk as it relates to CMMC. So our first question is, what is this CMMC risk assessment? So a CMMC risk assessment is a series of questions that help you to understand where your risk is. Now, depending on the level that you're trying to achieve in CMMC, uh, and that, that is a moving target these days, I just heard a, an update, we have new levels. But really what you're trying to do is take a holistic look at the digital and physical risks that your organization might have uh, that could then in turn present a risk to the government client you're serving. So the reason you have to go through that risk assessment and what's in it is a series of questions to help understand uh, how secure are you? Uh, and if you have risk, what are those risks? What could be done about those risks? Uh, and then the output of that assessment is findings that you can share uh, with the clients that you're trying to work with. Okay, that makes sense. All right, so how do I manage ongoing risk for CMMC? So this one's interesting. Um, whether it's CMMC or anything else, managing ongoing risk is, is a critical part of good security. So, uh, you know, we have risks and they come in different forms. Some of them are administrative, some of them are physical, some are technical. Uh, sometimes it's a software bug that we refer to as a vulnerability. And because risk is continuous and it evolves and changes, uh, the easiest way to manage ongoing risk is to have a risk management platform or a risk management function uh, where you periodically review uh, what risks are still in existence and have any new risks come up, uh, as well as notating any risks that you have been able to reduce uh, or mitigate. And one good thing too you're talking about is that this is an ongoing thing. This is not a, okay, we're gonna do it one time, we're done, okay, great, we know what our risks are. And as time goes on, we need to go back and revisit these things. So that's a good point. All right, so is the NIST 800-171 the same thing as CMMC? No, but it is a large part of it. So the CMMC itself is comprised of a couple different elements, primarily uh, NIST frameworks, a little bit from the 853 series, a little bit from the 800-171 series. And then depending on your cloud uh, presence, you may also have some additional NIST requirements. Uh, it's majority 171, but it's not entirely 800-171. So they are, they are different, but there's a lot of overlap, especially if you're a level one or what now I think is level three. I believe they did away with level two. Mm -hmm. So if you're if you're a level one or a level three, the majority of your questions will be those 800, 171 questions. Mm -hmm. As you progress to the higher levels, that's when you're going to see a little bit more of the 853 being brought into the mix. Uh, the 840, I think I'd have to double check. Uh, NIST has a lot of special publications. Mm -hmm. 
Steel Root, a national leader in helping companies in the defense industrial base with CMMC preparation and federal cybersecurity regulations. Big or small, Steel Root is here to help design, build, and manage IT. The Steel Root reference architecture is a secure, cloud native operating environment built on zero trust principles. Steel Root also provides managed cybersecurity, IT, and virtual ISSO services. Visit steelroot.us for more information. Yeah, I don't know exactly what number one that one is easier, but okay. So this is a good question. So how often should I be conducting risk assessments to meet that specific requirement that is periodic risk assessments for CMMC? So I love when we use words like periodic or reasonable, um, very loose definition. Generally though, it is an accepted best practice that periodic means quarterly or more frequently. So every 90 days, if you're doing your risk management correctly, you should have updates that are needed to be made. Um, so really looking at it on a quarterly basis is, is the most convenient way to do it. And to date, that has been enough to meet anyone's definition of periodic. What you don't want to do is say, well, I'm, I'm going to look at the beginning of the year and I'm going to look at the end of the year. That is not frequent enough to address some of the things that might come up mid year. So I, I encourage people to do it quarterly for sure. And it's probably a good idea to just put it in your calendar every 90 days. So that way it's going to automatically pop up because time goes by so fast. And we just try to think, well, when's the last time we did that? We're not really keeping track of things. It could be a year that's gone by. So just putting it in there in their computer is going to pop up and know that you need to, to get that done. So that's another good little trick. Yeah, and I would just add a little bit to that to say, if you're managing risk uh, in a formal way, if you're using a risk management platform, mm -hmm. um, you don't necessarily have to go through the entire assessment again. What, what you should do is review and amend as necessary. So if you have a new risk that didn't exist previously that gets added, if you have addressed risks, it's equally important to mark those as being addressed as well. Uh, unfortunately, if you have an event, somebody might ask for a copy of your risk assessment and the more out of date that it is, the more time gets spent and money gets spent trying to explain, no, we actually fixed that and here's, here's evidence. So keeping them up to date actually can save you a lot of time and money uh, if, should you have a security event. And I think that's the biggest thing nowadays with cybersecurity is, is the expense always gets thrown out there. Oh, it's too expensive. I don't have time to do this, you know, but if we look at how much more time and money it's going to cost if this stuff is the proactive stuff isn't done when something does happen, because chances are it is going to happen. It's it, it's 10 times the amount at least, you know, than, than being proactive and taking some of the stuff into consideration beforehand. So like you said, keep that up to speed because it's going to be time and money for them to have to, you know, check out what's been going on since that last update that they have. Mm -hmm. So what else would you like to tell us about this whole risk assessment world here? Well, I think, you know, uh, we're seeing some interesting trends. So some of the things that we're starting to see are insurance companies now are wanting to take a deeper look at your risk. And in some cases, they want to conduct a risk assessment themselves. Uh, while this can be helpful, it's always important to remember the insurance company represents their interests, mm -hmm. not yours. Uh, so you may want to be cautious about how much you leverage some of those service offerings that they have. Mm -hmm. The other thing that we're noticing is a growing trend of alignment to CMMC for non-DOD related activities. Uh, for example, Texas just passed a piece of legislation. They now have uh, what they call TexRAMP, which is essentially the same as FedRAMP. Uh, and if you're unfamiliar, FedRAMP is the uh, process that you have to go through if you want to provide cloud services to the federal government. You basically go through this process and prove that your, your security configurations are in line with best practice, that you're doing enough of the right things internally in your organization to limit and manage risk uh, and therefore promote security. And if you don't have a FedRAMP, uh, you are unable to bid on certain federal contracts. We're now seeing states adopting the same methodology and same strategy, giving it a different name, but essentially it's it's a one to one. And we're also seeing that with the CMMC. Um, so, you know, originally its intent was for contractors and uh, primes and subprimes who provide product or service to the Department of Defense. Uh, but because it is a, a very robust framework, uh, we are seeing it now be applied at, at state level uh, and in some cases within private organizations as well. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and I think we're going to see more and more of that coming down the pike here. And, you know, at the end of the day, it is just good business practices that you're doing. You're protecting your your, your, your data, your clients' information, all that kind of stuff. So uh, it's just stuff that we need to we need to get with the program here. And some, some are going to require, and I think I always heard the other day that some of the level one, maybe some of the subs, that some of the primes, not maybe not if someone's cutting the grass or something like that, but if someone's handling some kind of data, even if it's not CUI, that they may require them to be, you know, be uh, CMMC certified. So that was interesting that they may be, even though the government contract doesn't say it, but it's just limiting your risk of who you're doing business with. So And, and some of that's being driven by the insurance industry. Mm -hmm. So with the changing requirements and the increased expense uh, that we're seeing, this year we've seen them dial it up we fully expect by next year, it's going to get even more aggressive. I actually just read a story this morning where there is conversation about splitting ransomware insurance away from other forms of insurance. Uh, and there's some legislation that's being debated right now to, to set limits on how much you can pay a criminal, uh, which I found to be an, an entertaining thing, right? Like, are we still about to pass a law that you can't pay the criminal more than this amount, but it's okay to pay them that amount? Right. So I think, you know, what, what organizations should be focused on is, have I done a risk assessment? Do I know where my risks are? Do I have enough support either through relationships with, with uh, managed service providers or internal staff or friends or family who are knowledgeable in this area mm -hmm. to make sure that I'm making wise choices about where I spend my next information security dollar and not just uh, buying a, a tool or an appliance that may or may not solve your actual problem. Mm -hmm. So the, the more businesses do this now before the hand is forced, the, the faster and cheaper it's going to be uh, to meet those new requirements that we know for sure are coming. It's it's we fully expect within the next four to five years uh, that you have to either have a named security professional on staff or you have to have a contractual relationship with an organization who provides that service for you, mm -hmm. who also then has a named security professional um, providing the guidance. Yeah, I agree. I definitely think the next three to five years is going to be very telling and it's going to look completely different than what it even looks like, like now. So it'll be interesting to see. All right. Well, thank you so much for all of your great input and everything. And I appreciate your time and uh, taking to do this interview. So thank you very much for that. I appreciate being here. Thanks for having me on. I, I always uh, enjoy the opportunity to share with people how they can be safer. Uh, just a quick plug. If you go to securitystudio.com, uh, if you don't have information security policies, we give them away for free without a registration email. Uh, a lot of great resources there for K-12 schools as well. Uh, we are mission before money. That's not a marketing spiel. That is our company culture. So feel free to check us out. Uh, we love to help and we love to serve the underserved. That's great. That's great. Thank you for pointing that out. All right. Well, thank you very much for your time again. And thank you everybody for watching. And we hope to see you on the next episode of 123 CMMC. Take care till then. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.